So this is just a very simple illustration that's in Illustrator. And you can see here we have these three little guys. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the zoom tool. And don't worry so much about how I'm using the zoom tool yet because we'll be learning that in future videos. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in on this. And what you'll notice is that the further I zoom makes no difference at all in how sharp, how crisp um, the lines are. There are no pixels. There are no uh, squares that are appearing, no blurriness, but I can zoom in. I'm at 6400% magnification now, and I still have these fantastic sharp lines. Okay, so vector images are what is known as resolution independent. It means that it doesn't really matter what size you intend to use it in. You can resize it any anytime very easily in order to make it uh, work for that size. So how does that work? I'm going to go ahead and create a new file here and I'm going to make a rectangle. And I want, so the way that this is working is that rather than with, with a raster image where it's telling me, okay, I need this color here, this color here, this color here, this color here, and all these squares, and I'm laying out this giant puzzle basically of, of colors. R vector images are being done using math. So what it's doing is it's saying to the computer, okay, this line extends for a certain amount of time and then it turns 90 degrees. And there's no curve in that turn, it's a sharp 90 degree turn. Then it extends downward and, and, it, and it does it in relation to this one. Maybe it extends down two thirds as far as this one went across. Then it goes 90 degrees again and goes that way. And then 90 degrees again and then back up to the top where it meets its original point. So this is a very simple one, but the same thing applies when we're looking at much more advanced uh, illustrations where it's saying, okay, mathematically you need to go this far, then turn, then turn again, and then turn at this, this rate. And it's all being done in the background mathematically. So if I take this picture and I decide I want it to be three times as big, it's not just stretching it up or blowing it up that big. It's actually redrawing it three times that big. It's using that same math to say, okay, it, he needs this particular image, but he needs it drawn mathematically three times larger than it is right now. Okay, so again, raster images are being, they're, they're made up of tiny pixels that are arranged in a way to create the overall image, where vector images are made up of points and lines that are colored and then filled in to create the image. Okay, now I say points and lines. Let's zoom in on this rectangle that I made. And you, if I put my mouse on it, you'll see a blue line appear there in the middle. So this is a point on that corner, and then there's a blue line that goes all the way over to here where there's another point, and then a blue a line that goes down. Now this particular shape is so simple, it only has four points and four lines right there on the corner. And I can set a color for my line, and I can set a color for my or for the fill that the shape makes as well, which we'll be learning about more about in future videos. Going back to here, you can see that this is going to have a lot more points and lines. So if I zoom in on this, and I select it, you can see that there's points all around this shape here. Here's a point up there, and then a line that curves down and goes up to another point. There's points all throughout this spiral, but everything is points and lines connecting and being filled with specific colors, and the lines being given specific colors to create the illustration that we want. Now, Vector illustrations can be very simple like this. They can also be extremely complex. There are photorealistic vector illustrations that you can't tell at all from being a photograph. It just depends on the skills and the time put into it by the illustrator. One last thing on vector illustrations, because why would it matter that we have this resolution independence? Well, really, perfect example of this is logos. Vector graphics are often used for logos. Let's say that I'm a company and I'm creating a logo to represent my company. Well, that logo is going to be used all over the place. That logo is going to be used on business cards. It's going to be used on brochures. It's going to be used on the side of my building. It might be used on billboards. It might be on stickers on cars. But this logo is going to be in all sorts of different sizes. Right? So by creating that logo as a vector illustration or a vector graphic, I now have the power to resize that any in any way that I need. Now, vector illustrations and vector graphics, they're generally the starting point. What generally happens is that once 
it's being used, it is exported as a raster image or a bitmap image for the actual usage. So if you go on the internet and you look at illustrations that were created in Illustrator, the actual image you're looking at, the actual file you're looking at on there is probably a raster image, a really definite raster image because web browsers don't support, most web browsers don't support vector images directly. So what would happen is I would finish this illustration and then I would export it as a raster image and I would say specifically, I want this to be five inches by five inches or I want this to be five feet by five feet. And it will create the pixels and, and the, the bitmap and raster plan to, to export and be exactly the size that I want at exactly the resolution that I want. So that's a general overview of vector versus bitmap graphics. In our next videos, we're gonna get into actually using the program, but in Illustrator, again, we are creating primarily vector graphics.